want him to come and preach to us the word of the Lord. Brother Harry, we appreciate you. Sister Harry, thank you for being here. We love you, and we want you to minister the word of God to us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord with you tonight and excited about what God is going to do with you this weekend. And, and great things are going to happen all over the world. And I strongly have felt for several days that tonight would, um, would be the beginning of great, great things moving across the planet. Um, by the time we are done tonight, there will be things happening all over the world through the prayers going up tonight and then continuing further in tomorrow and into fr Saturday and Friday and Saturday. Give honor to your pastor. If you love Pastor Kinsey, would you get loud? <laughs> Amen. You're very blessed in who you have as your pastor and all the great things he's done for the kingdom of God. and. A mighty general among us and we we give him honor and and i did not know i thought i was a, an old evangelist because i've been this is my 16th year evangelizing and he he told me he evangelized 20 so i felt like a kid again instantly and uh but i give him honor tonight and uh what a man of god you have and great author and so many wonderful things he's done for the kingdom of the lord i definitely have direction from the lord tonight and i i, I want to go to isaiah 59 verse 16 Romans 8, 26 and 27, and then 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. So glad my wife is here with me and my two boys who, who are both in nursery, I believe, and the baby girl that's on the way. I have no idea about girls. If anyone wants to pray for me tonight and make that your gift to us, I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think my mom was a girl. That's about all I know. Amen. Isaiah 59, verse 16, and then Romans 8, 26 and 27, 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. The Bible says, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Someone say intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. I felt all week long in praying and fasting to, to release this tonight, and I want to give this message to you, and let's go into the Spirit tonight, and the title will be Unleash the Intercessors. Unleash the intercessors. Turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor, and tell them a prayer meeting will take off tonight in this room. And then ask them a question, will you be involved in it? If you're going to be involved, would you help me worship the Lord one more time? And would you magnify his name? I worship you, Lord Jesus. I bless your holy name. Someone lift up your voice right now so loud that hell can hear you as you glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We have you. I love you, Jesus. Blessed be thy matchless holy name. Have your way tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus. Use us for your glory and your kingdom in Jesus' name. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
We just read in 2 Timothy the four types of prayer, four channels of prayer that God understands. There are four levels of praying every child of God can tap into. Obviously, the first level is called prayer itself, praying. Praying is usually unemotional. It's just con conversing with the Lord, talking to him like you would a friend, maybe in the car, or maybe at the job, or maybe at home as you begin to talk to the Lord. That's a channel that you can find divine access to the throne of God in known as prayer. There's a, another level of prayer above that called supplication which is just like praying except it's more emotional. It's more intense. Supplication is very similar to intercession except supplication is basically interceding for yourself. You're very intense about a need that's in your house or in your family or in your life at your job job in your finances and so you bring your supplication or your petition before the Lord and you're usually desperate when you're in supplication it's a channel that God hears when the child of God gets so desperate and so in tune with him that they begin to bring a supplication of their need before the Lord then there's the channel of thanksgiving that's a very unused channel unfortunately among us it's the channel of giving God glory for for what he's done. I dare say a lot of us would have more miracles today if we'd be thankful for what he did yesterday. We've got a lot of people that know how to get desperate when they bring their supplication, but they're not desperate when God does the miracle. They thank him for five minutes and move on to the next problem. But I promise you, if we remember what he did yesterday, we'd have no problem having faith for today and tomorrow because Thanksgiving is a channel that God does answer. These are channels, and like Verbal Bean said in his book, that if you were in one of these channels praying and you're not getting through, switch the channel. Go to a different, go to a different vein where you're trying to get God's attention. But the fourth type of praying is called intercession. Intercession is the deepest level of prayer someone can get involved with. It's the hardest level of prayer to tap into because it is the completely the Spirit of God praying through someone when they tap into intercession. When you in, get involved in interceding for a situation, the, the presence of God is literally praying through you, meaning that this is the one of the four channels, that this is the only one that you cannot control. You can pray in prayer for a while, and then when you're done, you can turn it off. You can bring your supplication to God for a while, and then when you're done, you can turn it off. You can enter things. Thanksgiving and thank God for as many things as you can think of and then when you're done you can turn it off but when you tap into intercession you are no longer in control of the prayer meeting you're no longer in control of what you pray for because when you are in intercession the spirit of God is literally praying through you the will of God for someone else that's why most people don't want to get involved in it too much because it doesn't involve their own need. But intercession is the Spirit of God praying through you. It's the only one of the four channels that guarantees an answer every time. You want answered prayers, get involved in intercession because that is God's Spirit praying through you. Intercessors are the most powerful people on the planet. One writer said that if the hell had a top ten most wanted list of the people that hell wanted to destroy, all ten would be intercessors. Because an intercessor, as Vesta Mangan said, is the only time, an intercessory prayer is the only time when you're in three places at one time. You're in heaven you're with the angels. You're in earth with people, and you're in hell fighting the demons of hell at the same time. You're involved with the Spirit of God praying through you. Intercession is powerful. It's praying the will of God. And let me tell you this. Intercessors usually do their best work alone. They do not need music in the background to keep them praying. 
the average altar call in North America lasts seven minutes long because we know how to sing, but we do not know how to pray very much. And when as soon as the music stops, we don't know what to say. But God, help us get to a place whether they're playing or not playing. I enter a place with God that I don't have to leave in five minutes, but I'm engaged in something that changes lives, changes the world. Billy Cole saw over a million people get the Holy Ghost, and, and he was a great hero of the apostolic faith, and his wife, Shirley Cole, was known for being a powerful intercessor. And I was privileged to go to her home and talk with her. And obviously, she died a couple of years ago, but a few years ago, we went to her home, me and my wife and, and the boys, and we were there and talking to her. And, and as we were talking with her, she was she would talk, and then all of a sudden she would just break out into intercession and just weep and wail and cry. And, and she told us about the time when he was in Ethiopia that she prayed on the floor for six days straight, did, did not get up except to use the restroom at the house there in West Virginia, prayed for the revival to break out. And that, in that weekend, 65,000 people received the Holy Ghost, and she was on the floor in America praying for it the entire time. And she told us something that I've never forgotten, and she said the number one signal that God is near you and wants to intercede through you the number one signal the intercession is coming upon you is depression because when you feel a heaviness come upon your spirit that is the quickest way to tap into intercession when you begin to get heavy about something, a situation in the world, something going on in our planet, and it begins to burden your spirit and burden your soul, it's the quickest way into intercession. But this is the problem. We don't like to feel discouraged or depressed. And so because we are usually in the flesh more than we are in the spirit, when heaviness comes upon our spirits, we try to medicate it somehow. Get, I've got to change what I'm wearing. I've got to go to the mall. I've got to eat something. I've got to do something to get this heavy off my spirit. Why? Because I don't like the way it's making me feel in the flesh. And so what happens is the spirit of God knows there's a need. There's, a, there's someone facing an attack in China right now. And so he looks for an intercessor and he comes down to somebody's home and he puts a heavy burden on their spirit and they feel it, but they don't like the way that feels. They don't even know yet that God's trying to pray for the person in China through them. But because they don't like the heaviness, they do something. I've got to get on my phone for three hours until I feel better. And then God walks away from the home looking somewhere else to find someone to pray. And then the same people come to God with the audacity to say, Lord, can you answer our prayer? I wonder why sometimes some of my prayers are not answered. Could it be that because I'm praying in a selfish dimension most of the time where most of my prayers involve me or the people I know getting answers rather than God, whatever your will is, who can I pray for? Would you, would you use me tonight? Would you trust me to pray for something or someone? And God sometimes will answer that when I'm, not, when I'm, being, when I'm being selfish and I'm just praying for myself. But, but usually if I want prayers answered for me. I know there's a direct way to get it. I've got to start praying for other people. I've got to start getting in the channel of praying. God, take me. Use me tonight. You realize you're in Pensacola, but before this night is over, you could be praying for someone in Africa. You could be praying for someone in Australia, someone in Chicago facing a gang, something going on crazy that God could pray through you. And while he's praying through you in this building, a miracle could happen a thousand miles away, 10,000. Yeah, no, I, I know you can't imagine that but that's exactly how it works when intercessory prayer breaks loose through a child of God all you need to do is be available to what God wants to pray through you but some people they just it's almost like God can't trust them to be intercessors if you're racist how is God going to trust you to intercede? If you hate your coworker, how is God going to come to your house tonight if your coworker is suicidal? 
and expect that person to pray with all their heart completely. What happens when you're in intercession, you're completely, you've lost control. And the Spirit of God's flow, you're just a vessel. He's just flowing through. He's praying through you, groaning. His words don't even make sense. You're just praying in the Spirit. And how can God trust me if I've got a problem with someone? Can God trust you to pray for a suicide bomber? Intercessors have to be available for whatever and whoever the Lord wants to pray it through them about. You know why some people don't like to intercede? Because sometimes God will wake you up at 317 in the morning. Can I, can, I feel like I'm very, I've never been here before, but I feel like I'm right at home. Some people don't like to pray at 317 in the morning. You know why? There's no crowd in the living room watching at 317 in the morning. <laughs> I love it. I'm coming right among you. Intercessors have to tap into deep levels of prayer no matter where they are. They could be in the car driving and there's something will come upon them and they've got a burden for something that they have no idea why it hit them. But all of a sudden something is burning in their spirit and God is praying through them because he trusts them. I know that child of God at their, at their break at work, I know they'll find somewhere alone and they'll hit their knees if I find them and pray through them. I can trust them. Intercessors know how to get a hold of God. Let me talk to you about changing the world on a Wednesday night in Pensacola. Let me just give you some stories, and you can just do them what you want, okay? The first time I encountered this intercessory th prayer thing, I was praying in my closet at home several years ago, and... Out of nowhere, Bishop, I was praying for somebody in Poland. Never been to Poland, but I, could, I knew I was praying. And all of a sudden, I knew I was praying for a missionary in Poland. And I began to wail. Didn't understand what I was doing. Just, just, just knew there was a missionary in trouble and began to wail and weep and cry and pray and pray and pray. And then all of a sudden, it was, it was, it was over. It was just done. It was a Thursday. Got up. That was crazy. That was weird. What was, what was that all about? And, and Friday, nothing. Saturday, nothing. Sunday, I was preaching in a different city. And Sunday night, I was talking about prayer and how, and I, was, I thought, well, I'll just tell what happened Thursday. You, sometimes when you're praying, God will take you places. And you don't even know why. You're, you just know you're trusting the Lord. He's using you somehow. And I'm telling this story. And I began to tell how I was praying for a missionary in Poland. And I had no idea in a crowd of 800 people, the missionary from Poland's daughter was in the audience. And as I began to tell the story, she calls her father on the phone. And he's listening as I began to tell what time and where I was at and what I prayed for and what I felt pray through me. And he's weeping on the phone. And after church, he tells her on the phone, I calculated at the exact hour that kid was on the floor in Florida. Your mother and I had packed our bags and we're going to leave Poland due to all the attacks we were under. But something came into the room and said, stay here. I have a work for you. You may think it's crazy. I call it intercessory prayer where God can use anyone, anywhere, at any time. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord right now. I remember... In a service in, in Stockton, California, about four years ago or so, we were in a great revival there. And in that midst of that great revival, we were praying for Israel every service. They were under such attack from the Palestinians. So every service during the song service, they, as, as a staff, they were praying for Israel. And I had been there several weeks, and so we had done this every service. And, and, all of, and I'd pray hard. But all of a sudden, this, this was a Sunday night, and they started praying. And out of nowhere, and you're going to think I'm crazy just listen to the whole story i was praying and i was it was like i was there and i saw these people on the border of israel launching rockets from palestine into israel and as those rockets went in the air this being up in the air looked back and swatted the rockets back into palestine and so you know you have to know me i'm crazy so i got up and told everyone they stared at me 
I said, I believe Michael the archangel, just who guards Israel, just swatted those rockets back in. They all looked at me. The next morning on the news, in case you missed it, last night, some soldiers in Palestine, and they came to the edge of the border of Israel. They launched rockets into Israel, but halfway in the air, the rockets somehow turned around and went back into Palestine. Oh, that's coincidence. Let me go further. When I was when I was seeing that, well, the reason why I thought it was Michael, I saw this thing made out of fire, just pushing stuff back. And I thought, man, that's got to be a, an angel. It's got to be Michael the archangel. And so I was I was telling everybody, I was rejoicing about. It. Some people attacked me, you know how it goes. And so that's fine. And so like four years later, this last summer, I'm on the phone with Brother Stone King, and he calls me to tell me a story he's never told me, and he said, I want to tell you something. T. W. Barnes. One time met Michael the archangel. And I said, I'm listening. <laughs> he said, that would get anyone's attention, I would hope. He said he prayed for Israel every day. And he said one time he went to Israel, got to his hotel in Jerusalem, sat on the bed, and Michael the archangel was in his room and said, welcome to Israel, Tom Barnes. We've been waiting for you. And I said to the stone king, what does Michael look like? He said, you wouldn't believe it, but the barn said he's a being made out of fire. And as soon as he said that, he went out the window up into the air, into the sky where he dwells, because he guards the borders of Israel. You can think I'm crazy. I don't care. I know what happened that night when we tap into a deep level of prayer. Oh, I'm not here to be cute church tonight. I'm here for someone to understand. You can tap into being a world changer without having a title or a position. You do not need a platform to change somebody's world tonight. You don't need a microphone. All you need is to learn to tap into intercessory prayer. I was in Jonesville, Louisiana. Does anyone know where Jonesville, Louisiana is? <laughs> There's like nine people. I'm shocked. That's the most I've ever seen. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm just teaching this stuff on intercessory prayer, trying to teach. I'm not a good teacher. And I was trying to, to release this stuff, middle of nowhere. And, and the pastor's got this... 20-year-old kid, he's a short little guy. It's funny that I'm calling somebody a short little guy. And he's a short little guy, and he's over here in the corner, and I'm talking about intercessory prayer, and people start interceding and praying, and he starts praying like I've never heard anybody pray. And this kid is speaking for over an hour in this Arabic tongue, and he, is, he keeps doing something with his eyes closed. He keeps, he keeps pointing at something and pointing at the feet and the hands, take, like taking shackles off pointing and for one hour straight he's literally speaking in this in this middle eastern tongue warring speaking and commanding these chains to fall off and for an hour the kid i mean i was i was i was worried about him he was praying so hard finally i noticed he was shaking and he kept pointing and commanding the chains to fall off and he was shaking more and so i walked through i said god whatever's going on you've got to get this thing through this kid now in jesus name and and so I prayed. He fell down speaking in tongues. When he fell down, I told the people, you're going to hear about some kind of hostage situation in the Middle East where an American is being held hostage but is released by that kid's prayer. And, of course, they did this. And a week later, driving through Texas, Kids are asleep. Janae's asleep. And it turned the, ra the news on the radio. And the newscaster said, in case you missed it, last week, Iran and the U.S. exchanged hostages. The U.S. released seven Iranians. Iran had three U.S. hostages. Two of them they willingly released, but one was a pastor from Idaho. They would not release, and they would not give him his medicine for his diabetes. And for 12 hours, they tried to hold him. But an unknown ambassador came into the room and commanded them to take off his shackles and take off his chains. You can think it's coincidence. I'll tell you about a kid that was in Louisiana that said, I'm going to pray until God uses me and God used him. Somebody worship the Lord right now. It's already starting to move in here.
We were in a New York prayer conference just less than a year ago. And in, that, in the middle of a deep service on a Thursday night, I felt the Lord tell me to tell the people, intercede against ISIS right now. And the people, 800 people, began to war. And the next morning, 100 ISIS leaders were destroyed. They were trying to kill Christians. You can call it coincidence. I called it a prayer meeting where people said, God, you've got to move. And you've got to move now. You've got to intervene. And you've got to intervene now. Pray through me what your will is. And I'll do whatever you say to do. <laughs> About when I was in San Jose, this guy walks up to me and says, hey, uh, I want you to pray about something. I said, okay. He said, uh, my wife and I, those are her kids right there, those two kids. And he said, she had two other kids from a previous marriage. And when they got divorced, uh, her ex-husband got the kids' finances, and he had more money. And, and, he, and uh, when he got the kids, he said to them, first thing, first night they got home was, don't ever mention God again. Don't mention church again. You're not allowed to have a Bible. Don't talk to anybody about the church. Don't ask to go to church. Nothing. I said, okay. He said, well, we've had a few court dates, and they keep, they, the judge keeps saying that's not enough to give the kids back. And they're crying to come home because they want to live for God. And I said, okay. He said, we've got a court date in Portland, Oregon in about three months from now. I said, okay. He said, I just want you to pray. I said, okay. I said, hey, if it's okay with your pastor, call me or text me before, before the, uh, the court date, and we'll pray. He said, okay. So three months go by. I'm, I'm in Indiana somewhere preaching, and, and I'm focused on my revival there, and, and I get this text. Hey, Brother Josh, this is Nathan, and he starts telling me. I said, oh, he said, tomorrow's the court date, 830 my time, which is 1130 on the East Coast. I said, okay. I said, okay, I'll be praying. So I go to church that night. We preach. We have all kind of great stuff happen, and the next morning, I forgot to pray for Nathan. Have you ever told someone you're going to pray for them and forgot to pray for them? One. I was going to say, oh, wait, me to switch to the lying spirit. <laughs> so, so as he, uh, as he began to tell me this, and I, I told him I'd pray, I forgot to pray. So the next day, it's like 2.30 in the afternoon, I'm at the church, and I'm praying for my service, of course. I forgot to pray for the need, and I'm praying for, and I'm walking around, the, and it hits me, you forgot to pray for Nathan. So I said, oh, God, forgive me. And I began to repent to the Lord. And, and the Lord said this, intercede now. That's all he said. And I said, it's too late, God. It was hours ago, the court day. Intercede now. So I just began to pray and war and pray and cry and pray and cry. And I got done. I texted Nathan. I said, the Lord... Uh, I'm sorry, and then, you know, just, just praying now. And he texts me, said, perfect timing. The judge just went into his chambers to decide who gets the kids. I said, oh. I said, what's the judge's name? See, God likes it when you get specific. He may not answer you the way you think, but he likes it when you get specific. It's called getting faith out. And so I, he told me his name. I said, okay, thanks. I said, Lord, there's this judge in Portland, Oregon. This is his name. Would you do something for me? Would you send angels to his chambers right now? And would you talk to that judge, and would you convince him of those kids' future that they need to live for God? I began to worship the Lord. One hour later, Nathan called me and said, you're not going to believe this. I said, you might want to try me on that. He said, he said, well, our own lawyer this morning when we first walked in and said, you need a miracle. There's not enough evidence to overturn anything. And the judge's last words before he walked into his chamber was, there's really not enough evidence for me to overturn anything. I'll be right back. But when he came out of his chamber... He said, this is what he said. I don't know why I'm doing this, but when I was in my chambers, I changed my mind and decided I'd give the kids back to the mother so they can go to the church with the mother. You think that's crazy? I'll tell you. I know exactly what it is. It's called intercessory praying. It works every time. What, what would happen if a massive church like this church became known in hell as the church of intercession where anything is possible, any service, because people know how to tap in? It's almost here. It's starting to move. 
Let me give you this, and then we'll go into it. I remember Janae and I were driving. This is this is where it gets real. We're driving B- Bishop through through Kentucky, and and Janae just starts crying, just just weeping. She was looking at her phone, and all of a sudden she starts weeping and just wailing. And I thought, oh man, what's wrong? And I pull off the road. Who died? What's going on? And and she tells me. She starts reading this story to me. How this lady in Pennsylvania worked at Walmart, had two little guys, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, Ryan and Scotty, and Scotty was three, and, and she starts telling me how she met a co-worker, the, the news said she met a co-worker, a big guy, and he, and when he came and he moved into her house with his kids, and they, they're all in this one little trailer together, and and one morning, Scotty gets up to, to for breakfast, and he didn't want to eat what they were giving him for breakfast, and so the, the man, the six-foot-five guy, ties him to the high chair and starts punching him over and over. Throws him into the room and beats him. I'll leave out the craziness and just beats him. Throws him in the room and leaves him locked in the room all day. And then the next morning when they get up for breakfast, obviously Scotty can He's all bruised and beat up, and he comes in, and he can't even open his mouth to eat, and because he can't open his mouth, the guy does it again, over and over and over and over, throws him in the room, and they all leave the house, and little Scotty dies alone in that room, and I left out half the details or more, and when she read that to me, I remember getting angry at God and saying, why didn't you do something? And this is what I heard. There was no intercessor. My people only care about praying about their stuff, their needs, their family, their finances, their church. I was, that was five years ago. I'm in Mississippi a few couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago at, at Woodlawn preaching, and I'm telling that story, and I had no idea there's a lady and her daughter in the back that apparently this mother, the Scotty who died, started going to a Pentecostal church in Pennsylvania the month before, and the girl was teaching the little boy in nursery. God was reaching for them. No one was interceding for them. And then we pray stuff like, God, send us revival. Who's going to pray for the lady being slapped around tonight? I'm going to get real right now. Who's going to pray for the man that's turning to alcohol right now because he can't take any more pressure on the job and he's been sober for years, but he can't deal with it anymore? Who's going to pray for the gang member tonight that's going to have all kind of stuff come at it? Who's going to pray for the child? Don't tell me you're called to war if we can't pray this. Who's going to pray for someone that's hurting? Who's going to pray for a baby? What mother is going to pray for a baby like she would pray for her own child, a baby in the NICU? I was in Houston this last Sunday preaching, and I'm going back again this Sunday. And right after the service was over, all these people baptized. We rushed to the to the NICU because one of the uh, the leaders in the church, their baby, had this, is in the NICU, been there for several weeks, and we're praying for the baby in the NICU, me and the pastor. And as I look around, there's babies all around in the NICU, and no one's praying for them, and no. No one's holding them, and no one cares about them. And the mother said, these babies that you see are all far off worse than my child. Wednesday night, what would happen all over the world right now if everybody tapped into praying and started praying so hard 
And all of a sudden, God was stopping stuff in the Middle East, protecting somebody in New York, going over here in Los Angeles, going to an apartment complex in Miami, intervening over here in India, stopping an attack in Africa, bringing a child water who's in a drought. What would happen right now in Pensacola? I've come to ask this church, are you ready to be called to war? Because if you are, you've got to learn to be an intercessor. That's the key to fighting in the spirit, praying until God is praying through you can the mothers of Zion go into it right now we have elders that know how to pray like nobody else in this building can they begin to pray right now can we get some teenagers to ignore everything around them and say God I'm available you don't have to know anything about it just be available some of you will see names some of you will see cities some of you will have an idea what you're saying just be available and God will pray through you and you can't change the whole world tonight but you can change somebody's world right now let this entire sanctuary be an altar call let this entire sanctuary turn into a place where war breaks out on the floor Lord Jesus, release the spirit of intercessory prayer right now in this church. Would you begin to go after it right now? If you can't feel it in your pew, head toward the altar. If you need to get after it somewhere, find a place. But don't wait till tomorrow. God can use you right now. Welcome to the spirit world. Welcome to spiritual warfare. Welcome to going after it. Welcome to seeing things that you've never seen before. Let it roar in Pensacola. Let the angels loose Almighty God tonight. Who's got Scotty's brother right now? Who's got, a, who's got someone at your school right now? Stir it up, Holy Ghost. Stir it up, Holy Ghost. Break the carnal. Let them get connected. Let those that are comfortable get uncomfortable. Let those that are content be stirred in their spirit. Someone needs to understand that the Lord wants to answer our prayers, but we need to pray the will of God for others first. Somebody pray for Israel. Somebody pray for the president. Somebody pray for someone at the White House. Somebody pray for the, the policeman. Somebody pray for the man that's in trouble right now. Somebody pray. You might be in a pew, but you can shake heaven right now. You can rattle the gates of hell right now. You can protect someone right now in the spirit. That's what intercession is. The spirit of God praying through you for someone else's need, on someone else's behalf, someone else's crisis, someone else's trial. There's a mother that don't know how to pray tonight. Would someone else pray for her right now? There's a father in desperate need right now. Would a father in here pray for him? Come on, Daniel. Stay Stand in the gap. Come on, Esther. Stand in the gap. Someone get like Daniel. Repent for the nation. And that's what brings angels. All over this room. Let it loose, Holy Ghost. Let old time apostolic prayer loose right now. Let the elders unleash it on hell right now. Let the elders unleash that anointing on hell right now.
I dare you to find your prayer spot and go after it. I dare you to get after it. I challenge you. You want to see angels. You want to have God do great things. You want to have God encounters. You want dreams from the spirit. You want answers from God. I dare you to say, God, let's go. You can trust me. Whatever it is, God, whoever it is, Lord. After all, some of us in here right now are only in here because someone interceded for us years ago. What grandmother interceded for someone else in this room right now 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and those prayers went ahead 40 years, and here you are tonight. Somebody pray for the drug addict. Somebody pray for the prisoner. Somebody pray for the guy in the psych ward right now. Somebody pray for that preacher. Somebody pray for that lady in trouble. Someone pray for that family about to lose their home, about to be on the street right now with little children. Ah! God hear us. Let somebody pray for a homeless person under a bridge right now. That's it. Be available. Be available. Let it loose all over the building. It's moving in here. There's nothing hell fears more than intercessory prayer. There's nothing hell fears more than the Lord praying through you because he has to leave whatever the Lord is praying through you about. That situation has to change when the Lord's praying through you. That's it. Pray in the spirit. Let the Lord pray through you in the spirit. And let's, let your mind go. Let God take over. Let your tongue go. Let God take over. I like it. It feels good. It feels like we're making progress. We're stirring it right now. We're stirring it right now. Loose the gift of faith on people right now to pray with authority, to pray with fervency, to pray with fire, to pray with intensity, to break down every stronghold in Pensacola. God, break the prince of this city's back. Buckle him, God. Wherever the prince is, wherever he gives his orders from in this city, I pray against him right now in the name of Jesus. I pray against his power. I pray against his authority. I pray you'd bring him down, God. I pray you'd raise this church up to a level of global attention like never before. I pray you'd use this church like never before. I pray for victory after victory victory to be unleashed in 2018. I pray for answered prayer after answered prayer to be unleashed in 2018. I pray for miracle after miracle to be unleashed right now in Jesus' name. Somebody throwing a curveball at hell right now. Hell was planning for war tomorrow night. Hell was planning on you praying hard tomorrow night. Hell was planning on you to come at them tomorrow night. Shake them up right now. Speak a miracle over someone right now. Release faith right now. This is how miracles get started. These are how battles are won right here.
Let the war begin. Let the people pray with fire. Let nothing hell has be able to stop them right now. I speak a divine channel, divine access to your throne right now, God, for your people. You call them a shataya, an unhindered channel, God, where they can hear your voice praying through them. An unhindered channel, God. Whatever's bound in heaven must be bound on earth. Whatever's loosed in heaven must be loosed in earth right now, God. Lord Jesus, bind some things in heaven. Loose some things in heaven and loose them and bind them through us right now on the earth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. There's nothing hell can do to stop this type of prayer meeting. There's nothing hell can do to stop you. You go as far as you want right now. Let God take you. Let God consume you. Let God help you. This is how it begins. Welcome to being an intercessor. He might wake you up tomorrow morning. He might call on you tomorrow afternoon. But get ready. It's how he does things. shake foundations in this city, God. I pray against strongholds. I pray against drugs and alcohol. I pray against corruption. I pray against anything hell's doing, God. Shake this city, God, with revival. Shake this city with apostolic revival. I speak backsliders are coming back this year. Backsliders are coming back, praying through. And they will stay, and they will stay, and they will stay, and they will stay. People driving by this church right now, let them feel your presence, God. People driving by right now, let them feel something. In their spirit, I pray. Let a fire be on the roof, God. Let a fire in the heavenlies stir, I pray, oh God. release intercession upon every leader, upon every minister, upon every musician, upon every singer, upon every Sunday school teacher, every greeter, every person involved in leadership. Unexpected Bible studies are coming. Unexpected Bible studies are coming. Hallelujah! Let this year be a year of reaping. Let long battles end in sudden victories. This church is fighting a greater battle than we even know right now. We're doing more than we even can comprehend right now with our human minds. There's more going on in the heavenlies than we realize right now, right above us. Warfare has broken out. Angels have been dispatched. Demons are scattering. God, let me see with your eyes. Let me pray your prayers. 
Let your will consume my will. <laughs> Intercession doesn't happen every day. It doesn't happen every week. But when God calls this, it's because things are happening all over the world. And he's calling on you tonight. It's not, your, it's not about your prayer ability. It's just about your availability. God knows when you're genuinely sincere, that's all he needs right now. Sincerity. Hunger. There's a peace in here right now. There's a peace in here right now. That tells me prayers have been answered all over the world right now. Situations are taking place all over the world right now. and 